Hello and welcome to NSAIDs and Renal Function. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care and Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So let's take a look at this concept of NSAIDs and renal function. First of all, let's do a little review here of renal function in and of itself. The kidneys receive about 25% of our overall cardiac output. So really important that we're not having any medications or anything that's going to the kidney that could potentially cause some disruption or problems with the kidney. However, non-steroidals, anti-inflammatory medications will block prostaglandin. That's the way that they work in order to try to decrease pain is by blocking prostaglandin. Now, this blockage of prostaglandin in the kidney is going to cause some damage to the kidney, specifically of the renal arterioles and the glomerular capillaries. So that is happening because of that medication. Now, if you're just giving us low dose of NSAID for a short period of time, it's not gonna cause much damage to the kidney, but high doses over a long period of time are gonna keep battering away. It's kind of like rubbing on the skin, and after a while, you get an abrasion, and then it starts to further deteriorate over time. So we wanna be careful that we're not continuing to stimulate this over a long period of time because it's going to damage those renal arterioles and glomerular capillaries. So what then happens when we have that damage? We're going to have an immune reaction occur that's going to be evidenced by vasodilation, capillary permeability, and clotting. Now, you've heard me talk about this before when we talk about inflammation, is that we're going to have vasodilation occur, capillary permeability, and clotting. So what does that mean? Well, vasodilation means that we're going to literally vasodilate and we're going to get some edema in that kidney. Now, when you look at that picture again, you can see there's a lot of vasculature in there. And if we're getting a lot of vasodilation, it's not only going to block off some of the vasculature, but it also could start blocking off some of those tubules and the filtering part that is going to cause the patient to have decreased filtration. Capillary permeability means that things are going to leak out of the capillaries into that renal tissue, and then that can cause additional damage. Lastly, we're going to have clotting. So clotting is going to occur as well, and that clotting then could cause some disruption of our renal blood flow. So all of these things together are then going to cause this immune reaction, and the immune reaction in the kidney is going to be evidenced by the patient having flank pain, Oliguria, okay, so that's decreased urine output, less than 400 mLs over a 24-hour period. Hematuria, so blood in the urine, protein in the urine. Hypertension, so we're going to see that blood pressure start to increase, and you may have heard of that already, that patients who are on non anti-inflammatories often are going to see they're going to have an elevated blood pressure. Our creatinine will increase in our GFR. Glomerular filtration rate is going to decrease as we start to get more of this immune reaction in the kidney. In most cases, if we stop the NSAID at this point, renal damage stops. If we continue to use the NSAID at this point, then we can have additional renal damage occurring to the patient's kidney. So possible contributing factors include, as I mentioned already, dose, okay, so the high dose over a long period of time, dehydration, so we're not washing out that medication from the kidney and it's allowed to sit in there for a longer period of time and we have that inflammatory process going on a longer period of time in the kidney. Underlying renal disease, certainly. If there's already renal disease and we're causing some additional damage by the inside, that's certainly going to cause more damage in the long run. And then multiple medications. So giving multiple medications that could have negative effects on the kidney, that's going to be just one more hit on the kidney that could be causing damage. Well, however, though, in this study, they found that there was no significant change in glomerular filtration rate or creatinine, and no significant proteinemia or hematuria in patients who were taking 
non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So even though theoretically this is what should happen, it doesn't look like it necessarily happens in practice, especially if people are taking the medication as directed and not for long periods of time. Here's the references if you want to go pull these two articles to find out more about them. As you notice, there is a little discrepancy here. So we look at that older study done by Dixit and Don't, and you can see that back in 2010, they're finding that there is acute kidney injury due to non anti-inflammatory medications. However, in this newer study that was done by Amatruda and his colleagues, they found that the association was not there. Well, thank you for joining me for non anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, and renal function. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, 